I'm Ryan O'Dowd, and you're listening to Ryan's Audiobooks on the Issues Magazine YouTube channel. Today we continue with Section 9-8 of The Incarnation of Ahriman by Rudolf Steiner. We're picking up in Lecture 3. Words nowadays do not really convey the innermost reality of things. As I have often told you, far too much store is set upon words, for words do not necessarily lead to that reality. Nowadays, indeed, it is a rather a case of words separating people from the real nature of things in the world. And this they do most of all when people accept ancient recordings such as the Gospels with so-called simple understanding. But there's a far truer simplicity in trying to penetrate to the indwelling spirit of things than to understand the Gospels themselves from the perspective of the spirit. As I told you, Ariamon and Lucifer will always work hand in hand. The only question is which of the two predominates in human consciousness at a particular epoch of time. It was a preeminently Lucifer culture that persisted until after the mystery of Golgotha, a culture inspired by the incarnation of Lucifer in China in the 3rd millennium BC. Many influences of this incarnation continued to spread and they were still powerful in the early Christian centuries. Indeed, they are working to this day. But now that we are facing an incarnation of Ahriman in the 3rd millennium after Christ, Lucifer's tracks are becoming less visible, and Ahriman's activities in such trends, as I have indicated, are increasingly prominent. Ahriman has made a kind of pact with Lucifer, which may be expressed in the following way. Ahriman, speaking to Lucifer, says, I, Ahriman, find it advantageous to make use of pickle jars. To you I will leave people's stomachs, if you will leave it to me to lull to sleep their awareness of the stomachs. You must understand what I mean by this. The consciousness of those human beings whom I have called devourers of soul and spirit is in a condition of dimness so far as their stomachs are concerned. For by not accepting the spiritual into their human nature, they drive straight into the Lucifer extreme everything they introduce into their stomachs. What people eat and drink without spirituality go straight to Lucifer. And what do I mean by pickle jars? I mean libraries, institutions of a similar kind, where the various sciences pursued by human beings without really stirring their interests are preserved. These sciences are not really alive in them, but are simply preserved in books on the shelves of libraries. All this knowledge has been detached from human beings. Everywhere there are books, books, books. When they take their doctor's degree, students have to write a learned thesis, which is then put into as many libraries as possible. When the student wants to take up some particular post, again he must write a thesis. In addition to this, people are forever writing although only a very small proportion of what they write is ever read. Only when people need to undertake preparation in some special instance do they resort to what is moldering away in libraries. These pickle jars of wisdom are an excellent means of furthering Ariman's aims. This kind of thing goes on everywhere. It could only be to some extent that people took a lively interest in it, but they do not its existence is entirely separate and apart. Just think, if one were so disposed one might well despair. Just think, for example, of a lawsuit where a lawyer is engaged to plead a case. The time comes when one has to discuss a matter. Documents pile up. The lawyer has them all there in a dossier. But when one starts talking, this lawyer has no inkling of the actual facts. The papers are turned over and over without getting anywhere. The lawyer has no connection at all with the documents. Here is one portfolio full of them, then another. The number of documents grows and grows, but as for interest in them, that is simply non-existent. These professional people make one despair when one has dealings with them. They really know nothing about the matter at issue, have no connection with it, for everything is contained in documents. These are the little pickle jars, and the libraries are the big pickle jars of soul and spirit. Everything is preserved and pickled in them, but human beings do not want to connect themselves with it, to permeate it with their interest. And finally there arises, specifically from this, the mood which does not want the head to play any part in a professed view of the world. But after all, the head, or some aspect of the head, is necessary for any understanding. What people like is to base their religious faith, their view of the world, on the heart alone. The heart must play a part, of course, but the way in which people today often speak of their religion reminds me of a saying much quoted in the district where I grew up. It was to this effect, love is a foreign bargain. When you buy it, you just buy the heart, and the head's thrown in free on top. This is more or less the attitude which people today like to adopt in their view of life. They would like to take in everything through the heart, as they say, without exerting the head at all. The heart cannot beat without the head, but the heart is well able to take things in if by heart here one really means the stomach. 
And then what ought to be achieved through the head is supposed to be grown in gratis, especially where the most important things in life are concerned. It is very important indeed to pay heed to these matters because in observing them it becomes evident what earnestness must be brought to bear here, how necessary it is to learn from the illusions to which even the Gospels may give rise, and how dearly humankind today loves those illusions. The truth is beyond the reach of the kind of knowledge for which people can aspire today. They feel on secure grounds when they can reckon by means of figures, when they can prove things by statistics. But figures divorced from qualitative aspects are means whereby people are led astray in a direction favorable to Ahriman for his future incarnation in the third millennium A.D. We shall speak of these things again in tomorrow's lecture. Thus concludes section 9.8 of the incarnation of Ahriman. Next time we will continue with section 9.9, the beginning of lecture 4. I will see you then. Alam.